video. This one's gonna be Lil Wayne, aka Lil Wheezy, versus Easy E. Now you probably might spit out your Pepsi, your Coca Cola, your Mountain Dew, your Sprite, your Seven Up, your Coke Forty Five, your Apple Juice, your Orange Juice, your water, your tea, your coffee. You might spit out your energy drink after I just said Lil Wayne versus Easy E. Now, these are two rap artists that came towards different eras. Easy E came in the eighties. And towards the mid-1990s, we could see there was a decline in his performances. Lil Wayne kind of came in the end of the 90s and into the beginning of the 2000s and later 2000s. And you could see parallels between two individuals. So we'll start with Lil Wayne. Now, Lil Wayne got his exposure of hip-hop in those 1990s, 97, 98, you know, around 15, 16 years old, you know, at that time, it was uncommon to have a young person that young sign a contract and do a rap album. And they created a group called Cash Money Millionaires. You know, it was a young Lil Wayne. You know, you had Juvenile. You had BG and Young Turk. And, of course, your producer was Baby and Manuel Fresh. Now, they did have other rappers, but those guys were always in and out of jail in New Orleans. And Lil Wayne got to be the leader of the group. You know, they were, he had fresh songs at that time that could never make it onto the radio because at that time there was a lot of competition. You know, the block is hot. You know, there was the G Code, G Code Part 2. You know, there was uh, I Got That Fire. And then there was, you know, 500 Degrees. And Lil Wayne kind of became like the leader, but you could kind of tell that he was going to outshine, outstun, and make more money than the whole entire group. Like, when it got to closer to like 2000, 2001, you know, when he got around 20, 21 years old, he was already a multi-millionaire 10 times over. And he had already done four albums already. And was now working on, you know, you know, because he had done the Cash Money Records, which which was already five albums. Then he had done his first solo album, you know, the Carter One, then the Carter Two, and then when he done Carter Three, he started doing it for radio play. And then he caught fire. Everyone wanted to do songs for Lil Wayne, you know, Fifty Cent, The Game, um, Too Short. E-40, um, Jay-Z, um, everybody wanted to do songs with Lil Wayne, Fabulous, you know, everybody wanted to do songs with this guy, and he became the most hottest selling album, um, artist, he would sell a hundred thousand albums, you know, then there was that period where he did back-to-back -back albums, where he had two albums in a row, and this is when he didn't, you know, there's the Carter album, and then he would just do two albums just because, and then he did collaborations. And then by the time it was 2004, he discovered Nicki Minaj. Of course, we know Safari is the one who discovered Nicki Minaj, but Lil Wayne was credited with it. And then by 2006, he created his own group called Young Money, Young Money Records. You know, he created his own record label. And then he would do songs with Eminem. You know, he went from dissing Eminem to doing songs with Eminem. You know, songs with Akon, Buster Rhymes, you know, and you like, that's funny. And then Lil Wayne does all these songs. They get, you know, smash hit after smash hit. You know, there's Fireman, my personal favorite. You know, he on a fire truck talking about I'm going to put all the fires out, which he ain't talking about fire. You, you know what he mean when he says the fireman. I don't have to tell you that because I don't want you two to take the video down for being too... Rambushes, rambushes, whatever they call the word, but we keeping it PG. You know what he mean when he say fireman. You know he did pop bottles. You know Jada kisses in the song, and you know what he's talking about when he says pop bottles. You know there's go DJ, go my DJ, pop one, two. You know he did. You know how Little Wayne is, and then Little Wayne would create characters, and then he ended up doing songs with Snoop Dogg, the Dog Father. 
songs with Ludacris, songs with um Jamie Foxx. You know, every time you turn around, every time you bought some other artist's album, Lil Wayne will appear on the album. It's like, man, you know, he was doing songs with Master P. First, he was feuding with Master P, and then he do a song with Master P. And I'm like, good grief. You know, he, he, he go from dissing these rappers to now doing collaborations with them. Do a song with uh, Jim Jones, Ball and Remix. Do a song with P. Diddy. And, you know, he would do all these collaborations. He signed Drake. All of a sudden, Drake's on his albums. He's on Drake's albums. He's on Nicki Minaj's albums. Nicki Minaj is on his albums. Do a song with Rihanna. You're like, good grief. And then, of course, by the time we get to 2015, um, you could see that he's put out four Carter albums, five Cash Money albums, appeared on 15 other people's albums, and he does this in a 13-year history. And then there's the lawsuit. There's the incident where somebody decided to shoot up the bus, which he managed to survive. And there were rumors and talks that... uh. Somebody had him set up to get taken out, and that he got into it with Young Thug and all that other stuff, and he had a fallout with, you know, with the management at Universal, and decided to part ways and take his own crew, and they were blocking the Carter Five from coming out for like almost three years. They would not let Carter Five come out, and it was a conspiracy. Like you could see that when Lil Wayne stopped being a puppet. And tried to be the little way that he should have been in the first place. Now he was being scrutinized. Oh, Alright, blocked the album from coming out. So now it's taking almost three years for the Carter Five to come out. You know, he trying to get out of the music industry and get into television and film. He trying to uh, change his image up a bit. Alright, let's scrutin him over. And you can see what type of effect it has on him. You know, there is the incident in 2018 where he took too much cough syrup and got hospitalized not once but three times in five years hospitalized three times you know thoughts of suicide and people like what's wrong with this man well little john wrote a song in 2007 called read a book and you see that it almost ended his career and Little Wayne felt inspired by that, and he thought he could take the same route as Little John. And you see what happens when you stop being a puppet and you try to you try to rebel up. You get a consequence. And Little Wayne, you know, started to uh, realize that there's only one way to the problem. And then there's that commercial that just makes it obvious that he he trying to stop doing what puppets do. But he realized he need the money. You know, there's Wendy Williams making fun of Lil Wayne because he'd have fell off his popularity. By 2018, you could just see he was no longer the baddest rapper. You could see he had fallen on hard times. He went from number one to number two to number three, all the way to number eight. And you're like, what's going on with this guy? Is, is this guy alive? Is he okay? Is he disturbed? You know, you don't see him, you know, you see him at the basketball and the football games and he's okay. But you're like, why you ain't putting out no music? You know, and then he finally gives you the Carter 5. And people are like, are you going to come back with a Carter 6? Which, you know you're going to come with a Carter 6. You, you know it's going to come. Question is, what Lil Wayne are you going to get? Are you going to get Puppet Lil Wayne? Or are you going to get the Lil Wayne that he thought he should have given? He always spoke highly of... Being like Tupac and Biggie. And Lil Wayne found out, like I found out as a rap fan, they don't want you being Tupac and Biggie. They don't want you to be a puppet. And if you don't be a puppet, you ain't got no money. And I'm sure he now realizes there are that's the problem. You know, are you gonna are you gonna continue or are you gonna stop? I think the commercial of him pouring the alcohol on everything in the store, I think that was like a nice consequence for him like since you want to misbehave we'll put you in a commercial where you look silly i mean and you could tell he did the commercial because he need the money but you could also tell a part of him you could tell he ain't happy with himself he but he's trying to hide it from his fans because he knows 
that that he ain't happy and and he ain't the only one that had this incident in the same year Kanye West also started to have a meltdown once again you can't be talking about rebel music and I think that's why they blocked uh Carter 5 for 3 years he put rebel stuff in that album and you see how that messes up everything don't you now that's the comparison to Easy E Easy E got his start in 1984. You know, he was selling cocaine. It's no secret. You've seen the movie Straight Outta Compton. You know, AWA. And he was doing that because that was his way of how he made money. And you saw the movie. He got with Ice Cube. He saw Dre and he had a vision. And he took his money and he didn't go to no record label. He made his own record label. And then he was smart. Because a lot of people just think Easy e was just a rapper and that's it. But he was really intelligent. And he figured out the industry and where it was going before it was going to where it was going. And they put out their first album straight out of Compton. Double platinum overnight. You know, Easy dropped seven verses and seven songs. At that time, it was unheard of for a rapper to go on the mic. And drop seven verses in seven songs. He rapped one time in each song. That's all you needed from Easy e And then to turn around and do a studio album. Do his solo album. Back to back albums. Three albums in one year. Had been unheard of for somebody to do that. He did it. And then, and then when they did their third album. Three NWA albums. And two Easy E solo albums. That was like five albums in five years. Like man, the way he was, the way he was just pumping out albums, it was unheard of. And some of these songs couldn't even get onto the radio because the content was just too uncut. Then he kills us with my six four. You know, you know he said the you know f the police, which was so highly controversial that police would actually pull you over in the car and actually arrest you if they heard that song play. You, you, Some of you younger kids probably find that hard to believe, but back when I was a kid, they caught you playing that song, oh, the, you, 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 you got a ticket. They gave you a ticket. What? You said what to the police? All right, give them a ticket, Johnny. It's just a rap song. Well, it ain't to me. And then he made songs... And then there's the disc, you know, he got mad when Ice Cube and him had a fallout. Dr. Dre left him, you know, had a fallout, made a disc. You know, there's a death row incident. Then he hooks up with a uh, notorious B.I.G. and does a song with uh, Bo Dugs and Harmony, which he signed and put out a group. And then you could see that he, you know, the controversial, you know, you, you mess with all these women and, you know... And you see, the 80s was good, but then the 90s, it took its toll on him. To see him struggling in an age of the 90s. You know, Tupac was here, Biggie, Too Short, Sugar Free. He would cut songs with all these people. But you could see that this was the second half of his career. He became a rebel. He started talking about politics in his albums. Uh, when Easy tried to put out his final solo album... They did the same thing to him, too. You know, they blocked an album from coming out for almost three years. And Easy's like, why has my album been blocked? They go, well, we don't like the content in your album. You know, and when Dre and, and Snoop got involved, and, well, at this point, he was tr trying to do a collaboration, and they blocked the album. And they waited, I think they waited until almost like 95, 97, 98, somewhere in there to release his album, because they blocked it. And Easy talked about how the industry do not like rebel rappers. They don't want you being a rebel. They don't want you trying to be your own businessman. And Easy predicted what was going to happen in the 2000s. He talked about how the stuff that he saw in rap wasn't rap. You know, the bubblegum rap. He talked about that wasn't real rap music and you know, they didn't like that the radio stations and told them, you can't say that on the radio and easy like, I don't care. You know, then there's the AIDS and then, you know, there's the passing and then there's the tragedy and then there's the decline. And I believe once we lost Easy, 
you could see all the pressure just fall on the Tupac, fall on the Biggie. Once Pac was gone, all the pressure's on Biggie. Then when we lost Biggie, you could see how hip-hop had its slow decline. You could see how music began to change. You could see stuff that they rapped that they thought was terrible. They now had to bring into rap games. Like the bubblegum rap slowly but maturely took over real rap music. You could see uh, pop music take over rock. You could see the change by 99, 2000. You could see the music was never the same again. And it wasn't until 99, 2000 that they started bringing some of Easy es old classic songs back. But that was because they were just trying to see if they could uh, resurrect hip-hop. You know, when 50 Cent came in the game, 50 started doing what the record labels don't like you doing. Being a rebel rapper. And they blocked his album for almost five years. Remember when 50 Cent got shot? Yeah, they blocked his album too for pretty much doing the same thing as Easy. e Now, you see the similarities between Lil Wayne and Easy. Lil Wayne started talking about politics the second half of his career. Started sabotaging Lil Wayne. Easy e same thing. Started talking about politics. Started sabotaging him. And then with Easy, since they couldn't make Easy E do what they wanted him to do, they would start ruining, you know, his album sales, putting them in the media, you know, having black women say he degrades black women on the albums, which he kind of was, and basically demonizing Easy. And for Lil Wayne, you could see they would just use him as a lightning rod, you know, put him on TV so he looked crazy and silly. And you could see how. Lil Wayne confused. Like, if you look at 2019, he looks confused. Like, he looked like he really don't even know if he is Lil Wayne. Like, he probably looking at old footage of him going, I'm Lil Wayne in that footage. And then look at the new footage. He probably don't even know who he is no more. Because you can't be no rebel in today's music. They don't like that. Like, when people be asking me why you ain't try to break in the rap industry. Because I'll be talking about some rebel stuff. And they'll have to can me for talking about some rebel stuff. Or you could just say that's a nice preview of what YouTube has. Same thing. You can't be on here talking like a rebel because uh, they'll can you just for doing that. So who's better in their prime? To me, I would say Easy e in the 80s would beat Lil Wayne if you're going by when Lil Wayne first started. I mean, Easy would be shocked that a kid of his age could rap that hard and beat you lyrically. But if you take it a little way from the 2000s, not the late 2000s, but from the early 2000s, and go against Easy towards the 90s where his music and performances began to decline due to AIDS and illness, Lil Wayne would probably beat him. But if you're talking about prime wise, by a slight margin, Easy is going to beat Lil Wayne. Now, I know some of you Lil Wayne fans are probably going to be pissed, but that's how it would go. It would be like three songs. Like, Lil Wayne will take Easy to his limit, okay? Wayne will push Easy e to four songs. It'll take Lil Wayne three songs to compete with Easy e but in the fourth and final song, Easy e will win. So, Lil Wayne will push Easy e to his limits, and Easy will win. So the winner is Easy e